okay. Very good. Uh, well, uh, I'm here today for presenting uh, what we have been doing on blockchain, specifically on Ethereum uh, blockchain, uh, in India with Faro. So this is. Ah, okay, yes. This is a Faro story about blockchain technology. Uh, I didn't spend much time in this one. In fact, I, didn't, uh, I was not able to find a picture of myself, so I found a picture of Goku that I is. <laughs> huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, much have been told about blockchain in general in the last years, specifically in the last uh, year, this one. Uh, but what is really, really blockchain? Ah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, yeah. That is, is what is becoming. It's a linked list. Huh? It's a linked list. It's a linked list. Yeah, maybe. Really. Uh, it's not Bitcoin. Right. So, where is Pablo? Pablo? So, no, this is not the cryptocurrency talk. And it's already too late. The doors have been locked. You cannot go out. It would be boring, maybe. But. So what is a, a, a blockchain? A blockchain is the distribute append-only transaction log. Okay? That means that it's a database that the only thing that it allows us to do is to append. It's always increasing, it's always getting bigger. Uh, the main properties of a blockchain is that it's, is that it's immutable data, it proposes immutable data, so we do not we are not able to modify any existing data, so it's append only, no insertions, no deletion, no, nothing, no removal, and a verifiable record. That means that we are able to jump from a transaction to a previous transaction and arrive to the very beginning of the, of the story. So it allows us to have a full track of everything. How does it work? Uh, in general, I will not get into the details of the implementation, but we can say that in, in a philosophical idea, is it tries to, I agree with you that this uh, capitalist uh, transform thing now, uh, it's a democratization and incentivization of the surveillance where each, part, uh, each, participate, uh, each participant of the network can do the surveillance and is a reward for doing it. So actually, it is on the people that participate on the network the responsibility of ensuring these previous two properties. And so again, it's a distributed append-only transaction law. What means that this distributor? It means that it's not centralized and it's not even decentralized. It's completely distributed. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network where everybody that is actively uh, participating into the network has a full representation of what's happening. It's immutable and verifiable, so that means that it's trustable. If we can verify and uh, we are we can ensure the fact that it's not immutable, that it's immutable, we can trust in the things that are there. So that is how we are right to have what I call the democratization of the trust. Okay. We, we, we can, I, I call it the, uh, actually after you, you, may, you may be thinking in, in the different ways of proof of work, but that it will go out of the, out of the picture. We are not, uh, I'm not going to talk about consensus algorithms. Yeah, but the essential, huh? that's the essential part, that's what we want to say. No, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. There are many different algorithms, many different flavors. And the problem is that if we become this uh, cryptographic uh, talk, it will become a two hour talk and have 30 minutes. Uh, so, blockchain is about democratic, uh, the democratizing the trust business. It's about making the trust uh, something that is not related with a single entity, like a bank, a state, and make it happen into a network of peers. So, what is the trust business? We want to lend some money to someone, we, can, we want to do some transfer from money from one point to another. The regular 
the regular workflow will be something like this. We want to give an apple, we give it to the bank, the bank take a bite, we pass it to the, bite, to the bank to the, of our friend, the second bank takes another bite, and then in the end, yeah, well, our friend receives something like a, a, a bite, a apple. What is the idea of, of blockchain as a trust business? It's a do one byte instead of two. Uh, if we can centralize everything in all, only one uh, network, we can reduce the intermediaries. There are many, many different. Okay, this example that I gave before is it is really related with cryptocurrencies and with the transfers of money. But there are many different domains of application of blockchain. Since the main, the, since the main feature of blockchain is to be mutable and uh, to be distributed. So, to be trustable and distributed. That is the main thing there. Uh, different domains of application, we have smart contracts, we have digital currency, cryptocurrency, securities and record keeping. We will focus in the area of smart contracts. There are many, uh, there are many ongoing different applications. Some of them are really useful, some of them are just bare drafts. The three things that they are not, we are not really yet capable of absorbing this technology, especially in the traditional business. Uh, well, a bit, uh, jumping a bit more into what is the basic structure of the blockchain, just in order to, to make clear what are the general the general, the, the general environment. So we will have accounts that will be related with the people that interact through the, through the blockchain in different, in different fashion, different ways. So we have uh, different accounts. Normally, depending on the flavor, they, they, they will be attached to an identity or not. Uh, that, that goes also out of the scope. Normally, an account will be mostly the thing at the, at the right or at the left, depending. So they hash. There is an address that is the, the account. Then, inside the blockchain, we will be able to find transactions. The transactions are, will be, again, movements of state, transformation of state, like sending money. I use, again, the sending money because it's the easier, it's the easier example. Where we have a from and a to. Yeah, and we have its own ID, it has a, a hash. So we, we are able to go and fetch information. These uh, transactions are ordered, uh, represented into many of the implementations, specifically in Ethereum, into a chunks that we will call block. So a block, it will be a set of transactions that are stamped and hashed and that are linked to a part, to a previous set of transactions. So like that we will have an idea of time series, an idea of uh, time evolution. Then, each of these blocks will be linked, again, like you can see, to the part. Uh -huh. So, so far, it's mostly understandable. Question? So, smart contract. What is a smart contract? If a contract is a remote object, it's a remote program. It's a program that we will deploy in, a, in somewhere. It, transforms, it reinforces rules. It means to, to, to optimize the impact of its application, of the application of what is a contract. And it allows to give different semantics to transactions. Before we were talking about transactions that are only for moving money from one, to, from one uh, account to another account. With this kind of verification, we'll be able to make the transaction to miss something else. Example, because uh, so far it was pretty abstract. We want to sell an item. Okay, we have a, an item that we want to sell online. What do we do? So, the first thing that we do is to choose a source of trust. We want to do it online. I'm from Argentina. Okay, so that means that I need someone in who trust for having a to be sure that we have my money, and as a customer, to be sure that the item will be delivered. I don't want to be scammed. 
So what do I do? I have a, an intermediary of trust. This is still in trust business. So what do we do? I get an account, I publish my product, I send my product once it's uh, sold, and I receive my money. It's, uh, okay, there are many possible workflows, this is the easier one. With everybody's happy, I got my item. Okay. How do we do it with Ethereum? We publish a contract. Again, there are many ways to do it. This is a, a strictly an example. We publish a, con a contract for sale, my item. I promote this item by uh, promoting it on Facebook or whatever way you, you want, maybe your own uh, platform. You send your product when the, once the, the soap was made, and you receive your money. How do we do this? By implementing a, a, a contract that it looks pretty much like a class in, in other languages. We will have... No, I cannot talk. So we will have a... Uh, an owner of the item, a buyer, that is, the, is an address that is related with the account of the person that is buying this item. Uh, if it has, no, the amount, uh, the amount that has been paid, that is kind of redundant data, I didn't erase it because if I erase it, I have to reconstruct all the example in all the other places. Too much. Uh, the price, and, uh, sorry, and the final the state. So in this case, we refine the sale as on sale, waiting for be sent, wait the product to be sent. Uh, it has been sent and finished, like the, the transaction has been complete. For refine, for reinforce the rules of this contract, we have three methods. The buy method, that is a payable method, so that means that we have to pay for applying this. Uh, for invoking this, uh, this method, that it checks that the item is on sale, that the amount of money is the one that this expect, and when everything is agreed, it uh, set the buyer and it changes the test of the contract. Second, we have another method that is informed that the package was received. This is supposed to be invoked by the client the person that uh, did the both. So, first I deploy the, the contract with the lead and the price, etc. I allow the, the buyer to execute buy. And once it re uh, he received the, the package, he will also execute inform that I received the package. Okay, I received the package, uh, pretty good. And then after, as end of this uh, kind of uh, state, uh, simple state machine, we have the withdraw money too. It has an address just to, to make it a, a bit more flexible. Uh, so it will check that the owner that is doing the transaction is me, that I post the, the, the item. It checks uh, that the state of the cell is proper, it has been sent. And it transfers the money and finish the state of the contract. Just like that. So, mm. what prevents me from saying that uh, I will receive the order from a country that received it? Uh, where? Yeah. Ah, here. Uh, again, this is a really simple. Uh, this is a really simple uh, example. You can just uh, to go out of the just to walk around. You can ask to the post. They have some postnets for signing the the package delivery. So you can ask for this uh, certified uh, service to tell you instead of the customer. So once uh, you check, but then again, what if he received it, but it's not what he was looking for? What if he received it, but it's not the state? Then there are many issues. That's why, again, this is a really naive, uh, naive example. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't implement it like this. It's just to illustrate the fact that there is a, that the contract works as a kind of state machine for allowing to articulate different interests that may be counter-interest. So, 
Start from the details around Ethereum is a blockchain based technology, it's open source public network, that means that whatever person can participate. It provides smart contracts. The stake is stored into a blockchain. <coughs> the bytecode is executed on top of this blockchain. So all the each of the clients, each of the of the participants in this network will be executing this code and checking that the resource is respected resource. And it has many ways of uh, implementing the contract. And so again, so uh, in order to be able to interact with this uh, with this uh, flavor of blockchain, we develop what is for that is a driver. It allows us to it's a, it's a small client that it allows us to uh, fetch information from a get clients that is a Go Ethereum uh, service that you have to install aside. So you have to install, install in, in some of your network this, uh, this client, and then with a Faro image, with Fog loaded, you can do some magic. So first, uh, in the, this very first two lines, what I will show you is the basic, uh, the, the basic protocol that get handles. So the kind of data type that they will be giving, and the kind of information that they have to give in order to retrieve information. So first we have the connection. This is really low level, we should not use it like this, but this is just for illustrating the, the kind of content. Here we, I ask him, I want to get a block that will be related with the time or whatever, in this case it's the latest block. Ah, yes of course. It consumes too much CPU and too much battery. So, so far so good, it gives me a dictionary with information, it's okay. The information is encoded. Nothing, nothing like that is hard to solve. But then we have what is a contract. For example, this is a, an address of a contract that I have. Is this? So this is a chunk of bytecode of what the contract is supposed to do. So this is the whole information that we can get from the blockchain, from the Ethereum client. Have you already looked for the site? Ah. No, it's not. To get uh, to fetch things into the memory, you have to, to use a specific part of the API. Mm. So this is the only uh, the, the, the only information. So far, it's really useless. It's like a a, a, a chunk of bytecode and nothing else. So let's let's create something a bit nicer. We have what we call a session. A session. If we are planning to <coughs> execute code that may cost money, it. Uh, it can be configured with a, an external account, that is the, the wallet that it will use to spend money. And we can check for, okay, I want to get the last block, but then I want to get the dictionary, I want to add some better verification. In this case, there is some information that I cannot decode because it makes no sense, like uh, the miner this is a participant in the network. but. We can check that it has no transactions, we can, have a, we can check that it has a parent, and we can navigate in the blockchain by checking just who is a parent. So I go parent, parent, okay, this says parent, parent. Also we have some, some Russell fancy stuff like stats, but in this case since it's a, a block that has absolutely nothing inside, there's nothing, to, no, there's nothing really to show. Then here we can check what is the account that I have. We have an account, it's an external account that means that there is a person related with, and we can check th things like, okay, I would like to know what is the balance, what is the amount of money that it has. So we can send 
some messages. So what we get when we are talking with the driver is our objects that are alive and they have some responsibility already implemented. Then also we can get some transactions. This are not, uh, the, in this case, the transaction I'm accessing it by the hash of the block and the location, where the number of transactions into this block. So here we have the transaction, it has a timestamp that is really related with the block. It has uh, an account from a no account, that means that it's uh, probably an instantiation of the contract. And in this block there are other four transactions. So maybe here, yes, we have a bit more of information. Still not enough to fulfill this other uh, graphics. Finally, we can get a contract that instead of being only a, a binary, it has some extra information but still not completely fulfilled because what do we have? We have only the bytecode, there are only the bytecode, so we cannot really easily do a, a transformation into which source code we did I use for deploying this, uh, which methods that uh, it does understand. It's just a hash and a bunch of bytecode. We can uh, do a bytecode analysis but it will not be really interesting. So, okay, this since it's completely empty, we cannot check much, but we could come here, check the, check the binary, we have a, a way to read it, but still, the only thing that we will find with this is to know which hash do we have to submit with which uh, amount of parameters that we don't really know the types for execute something. So, so far it's still useless. Then, other things that we can do, I, I said that we can, uh, we can that we, we set the, the session, uh, to the session we set an account in order to be able to interact or to waste some money. Okay, for this what I will do is I will load a file that I have, that is... version of OS process, so this is kind of sad, but we have to re restart. It's related with the re resolution of the bits of the child, that if they are dead or not. So again, I will come back here. No, I didn't set the session, sorry. Here we have a description that is a contract description. It has a source code that we were uh, looking before in the uh, in the slides. And since we have developed a parser in Snack for interpreting this kind of, of source code, we are able to do some <coughs> analysis and to generate some uh, file internal structures in order to interact and to be able to analysis a bit, to do some analysis more nicely. So we have the types that are involved into this contract. So we have an enum, we have uh, is using an address, we have two, uh, and we have two references to enum. Uh, we are using the string and we are using uint. String is reificated because it's a, a string. No? I mean, it's an array of characters. Inside we have also the selectors. Each of these selectors that you are looking, at, each of the, these methods that you are looking now here are mirrors. So that means that they are able to be executed over a given uh, bind or a given contract, or verification of contract. And the same with the properties here. We have a noun that is a, an address, a buyer, pay, item name, state, etc. We have also the constructor that is uh, refined as a, also as a class side method. The ABI, that is the minimal information needed for interact with a typical driver uh, with the contract. 
again, the binary and the runtime mnemonic. Actually, the, when we compile a contract, what happens is that we are compiling it to a bytecode that is self-deployable. So what it does is uh, it initializes some variables according to the constructor, and then it takes the rest of the code and it copy pastes into the into the blockchain. As everything as a constructor. Okay. So then, after, uh, once I have this, this kind of description, uh, we were able to use still everything as a mirror, but using the things as a mirror, it makes uh, all the interactions pretty verbose. So what we did is to generate a proxy. A proxy that the only thing that it does is to delegate So what it does uh, mainly is to delegate into the mirror. It, it has a mirror for the class, it has a mirror for the instance, and it has a mirror for each kind of method, and for each kind of property, and for each kind of uh, type. First, it checks if it is a state modifier, in order to know if it should be applied as a transaction or not. Now, actually, to, to check if you are able to execute this, since you may not have a not be pointing to the proper block reference. Just to, to, uh, I, will, I will explain you after if you want. And it does only this. It's using a session, applies over an instance, that is the, the bind of the, contra the, of the contract, at a block reference that it will be a pointing on time, with uh, arguments that are uh, no argument, from the application account, that is the account that we set in the, in the transaction. So now we are able to, with this proxy, to execute the constructor that it generates also, it generates also a, a, a class side method. We can execute it, we can decide, we can see that there was an, uh, a transaction that has been uh, sent, submit contract creation. It will take some time, especially because my my computer is, is pretty loaded now. And it will give us an instance of the contract that we just... So, in this case, we can see the contract that we are checking is not anymore the previous contract that was a, a bind, but it's something that it has an owner, it has a buyer, it has a pay, it has a price, it has an item name, and it is on sale. Ah, something that is fancy that I didn't show is the fact that we are using slots here also. Contracts. Uh, so in this case, for, for the definition of the contract, when we are generating this proxy, it generates for each variable of the contract a contract property slot that is not, it's actually a kind of virtual slot. It's time that you check for the information on this variable. What it does is go to the blockchain, check the, bring the information and take it back. Like that, you, are, you can be sure that there is always fresh data in what you are, in what you are doing. Then, we are able to use different methods as prepare, prepare to put the to put actually the item on sale, and we can execute it transparently. So now, submit the transaction. In this case, it does not say contract creation; it's just a method invocation. For us, it can be transparent or not. Actually, the execution of a method in fog it gives us a feature that we can use it like in here that is synchronized uh, or we can use value directly that is synchronized up to the moment that this, uh, the value is released or we can use some callbacks in order to, to make it asynchronous or we just kind of care and keep on executing it in the end a blockchain uh, like Ethereum will allow us to keep on running our stuff meanwhile the, the things are running 
on the side of the blockchain. So here it finished. And we bought actually the item. So we paid 30. The buyer is the same person as the owner. We are waiting for send. Some item. And then finally, if I try to withdraw money, this will not work. But I don't remember if it was send an error. Yeah. Uh -huh. That part is not shown. Yeah. It's not shown. Yeah, it look at it if you can. Ah, okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, huh? So, well, I will just execute, uh, inform that the item has been received. It will, like, before span a new transaction. And after we will be able to. <coughs> actually, an instance is also a subclass of uh, an account because it has money, so we can check the balance. Ah, oh. oh, no, sorry, it's not. The instance instance is only part of the balance. Yeah, third. That's third euros is the money that we send in order to buy the item. And then we can withdraw the money. Oh, or not. Or not, maybe. Okay, we'll not do back here. But basically what it will do is to withdraw the money and in this case it will work because of the state. I can I can show you a bit more of examples after the after the talk if you're interested. These are also after I have some, some code for generating information for the next part of the talk. So so far that, that is just for it's a driver that allows us to So far, that is four. That is the driver that allows us to to interact with the same uh, blockchain. It has some nice features for making the the relation with contracts transparent, or kind of transparent. It cannot be completely transparent since if the transaction fails, what do we do, etc. Uh, what are the challenges in in four? The Ethereum platform is quite undocumented and it's quite immature, what means that it has many changes all the time, like the, the syntax of the language itself is changing all the time. Before we were using throw, now throw is deprecated and we use reverse. Uh, like that there are many, uh, before there were only building modifiers, now we can build our own, our own modifiers. So from the point of view of our parser, we are constantly updating it and this has impact every, everywhere. Uh, again, like I showed you before, the deployed contracts are pieces of bytecode, so there's not any reference to the original description. After we did some work on that, that we show you after, uh, in order to, to check if we have in our personal database of contracts some contract that matches with this, uh, with a specific fetch contract. Uh, contract have only so, they have a very low data, uh, API for accessing. So, actually, what the state was asking me before is how do I check the. Ah, three minutes. Very good. So, um, how do I check the information of a, of a contract? What do I do? I have to check in order and in, a, in size of the each variables in which slot of 32 bytes is stored in the blockchain. So I have to use the types in order to be able to marshal the information that comes from the blockchain and I have to do a memory mapping, some reverse engineering on the mapping behavior and the memory behavior in order to be able to fetch specific registry and specific offset inside the registry. Uh, content inspection, yeah. Then for basically it does uh, get uh, it does the marshalling, it has the parcel behind, it has auto verification, parallel mirrors for remote uh, instances. Thanks, Nick. Why is Nick? Uh, it pushes us to implement a cryptographic algorithm 
things that I wouldn't do if I'm not really on need. Uh, and it has uh, so far a clear API that is kind of uh, stable. He gave us a, a paper on a workshop about uh, inspecting contracts. Okay, this is uh, mostly how it works. It has a mirror for each of the things that we are using. And then, just to go fast, I think I will overpass uh, like three minutes more time. And it's useful. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the problem? So far, we have a, we deploy something and we have a cache. But what, what does that mean? That I have to stop this cache forever in my in my database and while I have money there because if I lost it, I will be in a huge trouble. And we have a contract that nobody is referencing. There's no garbage collection, but if we cannot draw back your we draw back your money, it's just just screw, plainly screw. Uh, it has massive data. That means that. Uh, it will be pretty hard to find it back. And actually, the, since the access is by hash, we can do kind of the best thing we can do is to have a pseudo sequential access to go to the first block and say, okay, is here my transaction? Yes. Okay, pretty good. That's the best case. No? Okay, parent is here? No. Parent. Okay. We have one terabyte, uh, terabyte just to keep on crawling. So it will be kind of annoying. And uh, still, the data openness, that is this fact that we cannot really fetch the information from a contract without doing some black magic, uh, is also annoying us here because we, okay, yes, we saw that there was a contract deployed, but we still have no clue what is inside. Uh, the hash access will uh, push us to have some secondary database, okay, etc. Massive data is always growing, etc. Okay, this pushes us to implement what we call UQLab, that is a kind of acronym for Universal Query Data uh, Query Language, that is kind of ambitious yet, but... Um, and that it allows us to index the whole blockchain and to put some metadata and allow to interact uh, in an SQL fashion. Just a quick demo. What we allow us to, to do is to create specific schemas related with the kind of uh, information that we will query, create different kind of indexes that can be just like a primary key or it can be related, uh, it can be a mapping index that it relates one attribute with another attribute. It allows us, also, of course, to drop the indexes and it allows us to select different kind of information in the, in the blockchain and to get our contracts back as well. So here I don't have any kind of hand code information. Example here. Let's just check this one. This is a query that comes from a collection that is called contract instances. And it gets a contract from a specific uh, hash. So this is pretty simple. Sorry, this is not specific hash, this is a binary hash. The binary hash is a hash over the binary code that is something that allows us to check if we have this contract at home or not. So here I will execute this, that it will parse and compile a nice stream that I, I did is just up to end here, so I just fetch all the information. We have so far 120 contracts deployed with this uh, this kind of uh, type, let's say. And for each one of, of, of these contracts, it gave us back the the proxified version of the of the contract. So we can keep on interacting with this and in messages. It has more. It has way more uh, other implications, way more other util utilization than just query contracts. The idea is to be able to index specific information, to be able to do also a pattern analysis of a transaction, and to start to maybe try to use some big data 
technologies in order to, generate, to detect, by example, uh, attacks on blockchain and say, okay, under this kind of patterns, we know that there, there will be an attack and things like that. Finally, also, we did a small visualizer, but it's really, really small, so I will not show it anymore like that. I can leave you peace to go to the beach. Uh, first, the future of Fog is to put some module, to put some documentation on it, uh, implement a canonical example to be able to really use it, uh, add more tests and benchmarks, and okay, keep on doing what we are doing, but just keep on the, uh, up to the syntaxes, up to the latest syntax. Uh, for UQLab is to implement a real order by, so far we are fetching all the information, that means that it takes really much time. To implement group by joins uh, to have a better, more smart way to index information, like using MapReduce map algorithms. Uh, and to add new schemes, like Apple Ledger, MongoDB, and RDB VMS uh, databases. And about the visualizer, okay, we have a lot of things to do, so we, we didn't solve so we didn't not even talk about it. Uh, then, other, other things to do, just in terms of vision, is to finish our most model in order to have better understanding of what's happening on the on our code and the relationship with the deployed code, and uh, to keep on working on metrics and some other kind of information that may give us some extra data of what's happening with our contracts, if they are weak or not, etc. So that's it. Questions? Yeah, tell me. Sandy, if you have a little bit, uh, because I found it a bit uh, interesting, the problem with the tree compilation, is it something specific about Solidity or these languages that uh, does not allow you to go from the bytecode back, back to some kind of source code? Or there are no such efforts? Uh, uh, the people of, uh, of Ethereum claim publicly we will never do the compilation and we will not do any for for supporting it. In other, in other kind of implementations, I will not tell you, I don't know. And they claim to do the compilation for uh, anonymization? There's a political... Mm, no, no, it's just a matter of optimization of code. They don't <laughs> want to add much uh, information. They have to, they, they want to keep the the bytecode short, and they want to keep it kind of controlled, and they want to keep it uh, light. And actually, if you think in each transaction, it consumes you an amount of bytes, and it grows up exponentially. Really, I know it, it, to me it's not a good decision, but it's a it's a respectable decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is. Hmm. No, it is, it is a static type for the compilation, nothing else. There's no type. There's no type. You can infer it by the kind of, uh, of operations done over the types, but it's kind of poor. You can do some couple of inferences, uh, nothing else. Hmm. Okay.